I still don't know what that smell is. It smells like something dead. Hi friends. We're gonna go check a the regrowth on a pasture field that, and the importance of back fencing our livestock or the reason why we're not strip grazing anymore during the growing season. Yeah, we we got our trusty old ruler, buddy. We're gonna check this out. What happened to the grazing stick? We don't use the grazing stick as much as we used to. It's a great tool for whenever you first start grazing and you need to uh, estimate dry matter yields so you know how much your livestock are eating. This here's the pasture field that we were in four days ago. We grazed it down as short as we possibly can. You can see, you can see that there's a lot of a lot left on top of the soil to protect the soil. But in the process of trying to consume as much as we possibly could, knowing that we probably would not come back to this field this year, at least during the growing season, because by the time we get the regrowth we need, it will be back into the wet season again. So let's let's measure some plants and see how much they actually grew in four days. Some of the plants in here, being that we held the cattle back a little bit longer trying to consume some of this clover, they actually overgraze some of the grass plants. And if we were to be on a three or four day rotation or strip grazing, and strip grazing is where you move the cat, you advance the cattle into a new piece of grass, but you pull the back fence out. And if you pull that back fence, they're able to come back and graze. Or as you can see, we have a hydrant. We have a hydrant right there. And if we were to keep our water located right there, the, the cattle or the livestock in this field, they'd, if we kept that stationary right there, they would have to come back to that hydrant to water. And in the process, they would continuously knock the tips off of this grass. If we take a look at this particular grass plant, we can see how short the cattle grazed this. The cattle actually grazed this down to approximately three inches. And in four days, in four days, we have seven inches of regrowth. So if we were to leave our livestock here where they had to come back to water, that plant, they may have come back in and nipped the tips off of this plant. Because these here are like candy bars to, to the livestock once they start regrowing. There's a lot of extra sugars in there. And they will effectively come back in three to four days if they have the opportunity and nip these tops off. If we nip these tops off, the regrowth on that plant will be almost nothing. We might get a half to an inch of regrowth in the same amount of time as it took us, in the same amount of time as it took us to get an accurate seven inches of regrowth in four days. Let's take a walk up and see where it is on some of the other plants at three days. Come along, let's check it out. 
Looks like Molly's acting like a boar. Looks like Scout's She's going Yeah, Molly's Mo Molly's looking for mice. Yeah, where's Toby gone? Yeah, Toby's found a groundhog hole some places. Or some <laughs> Or he found some tree swallows. It's hard to tell where he's at. Maybe he's pretty sneaky. Okay, here's, here's the graze line. In this particular field, we moved our cows twice a day. This here's where we moved them, or the graze line. And this here's the first paddock for four days. And I'm going to show a clip of where we brought the cattle into here. Here's the second move. You can see it's starting to green up. It's starting to green up and look nice. I think I'm gonna pull this dock out of the ground. Okay, let's see you pull that dock out of the ground. I think I should, you think I should go back and get a shovel? You might need a backhoe. It's got such a root system on it. This here, this here is what's left of a dock plant that the cows had grazed. You can see that they just basically took the leaves off of it and they didn't graze the stem part. It, a lot of folks have a difficulty with the dock plant and it's not really a highly palatable plant but it has a tremendous root system and those tremendous root systems go deep into the ground and perhaps bring other nutrients up out of the soil where our symbiotic relationships can work or our system can work as one. So the nutrients that this dock plant pulled up, maybe these grass plants that are beside it can utilize some of those nutrients. I'm making... Well, see, see you pull that out again. Pretty tough, huh? This here's three days of rest. Isn't this dock? That is dock. Let's see if we can find another bunch of orchard grass and measure that particular plant to see what the regrowth at three days is. I'm not finding a lot of orchard grass. Ah, here's one. Friends, I found an orchard grass. Let me guess, the orchard grass is this one? This tall one? Right here. Our plant was grazed down to here, and we can see that there hasn't been any regrowth start on that shoot. But here's regrowth on here, and here. Here's some regrowth. Let's measure it and see what the regrowth is we got. This particular plant, the cows grazed it down to three and three quarter inches. Almost the same height as uh, the other grass. But the regrowth, the regrowth as you can see, is five inches in three days. Let's move up and see if we can find where we've grazed two days ago. Um, speaking of freeze, that aster plant, you know how it freezes and it gets more palatable? Yeah. Well, I think. What is it? The Brussels sprout. It, it becomes pickable whenever it gets frozen in the winter. Yeah, Brussels sprouts taste better if we pick them when they freeze. Um, I'm. Or uh, after they freeze, because they actually get sweeter. Here's the gray's line. See, we're greening back up. Three days of regrowth. Scout. Scout, he's doing the border collie thing. <laughs> Rolling in something dead or something old. They, the border collies, they love the rolling stinky stuff. <laughs> now, uh, Do you smell good now, Scout? He's like, yep. Thing, things that we... Th 
<laughs> that we think really smell bad, the Border Collies think that that's perfume. That's not gonna be good. Okay, we're approaching where we had two days of regrowth. So here's the graze line. Let's take a look at the regrowth, the regrowth at two days. It's a lot, lot less as we could expect, two days of regrowth. We can measure this one. Okay, we can we can see where the cattle would graze this down. This particular plant. Oh, there's a snail. Little itty bitty baby snail. Mhm. Mm oh, there's two more. We'll grab one and show your show our friends what a snail looks like. This particular plant was grazed to three inches. That's a that's a baby snail, all right. Check that little guy out. We got thousands of them. I'm just gonna put him back on his little. Our regrowth in two days I'll on this on this particular plant. Um, Scout, don't lick me. I is five inches. Oh crap! I'm a stink now. I have to wash my hands now. Boy, he smells, doesn't he? Woo! Border collies, washed. border collies sure have a sense of humor when it comes to perfume, huh? They're the, one of the smartest dogs. We have a, a staging area over on our other farm. We move our cattle across the road. We hold them there until we get them all across the road and then we move them into the paddock that's necessary to take them to. But by doing so, they may move across that, that paddock several times throughout the, the growing season. From them being in there for as little as 15 minutes and nipping the tops off of those plants, those plants never really grow like they should and have the tonnage. So that is one of the reasons that we back fence our livestock and we stop strip grazing in the growing part of the year. Now in the winter time, whenever water's more of a challenge and we have to keep water tubs thawed out and, and keep water in a liquid state, we do do a little bit of strip grazing. I know a place where it's hard to keep water in a liquid state. Where? Death Valley. When it turns tonight and you have water out, by morning it'll be ice. In, and in Death Valley? Isn't that a desert? Yes. It's very cold at night and very, and very, very hot in the morning and very cold. And I mean very, very cold at night. Oh, okay. You, well, we learn something every day, huh? Yeah, and also... What's it like here in, in January? Can we have days 20 below zero in January? Yep. Yep. It's a challenge to keep water in a liquid state in January here. But we've... Uh, had a lot of learning experiences. We never give up and we're able to do that and we're going to bring that to you in future videos. Being able to keep water in a liquid state without any source of heat. Uh Friends, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you found this helpful. Please subscribe, like, comment, and smash that notification bell. See you later guys. Wasn't even videoing. I got I had to push the button to video. I got to redo that whole thing. <laughs>